Today we get to hear from her and she will be talking about podcasting for speakers, authors, and entrepreneurs. So if you are looking at getting into podcasting, if you are a podcaster, listen to Margo. She's going to have some incredible information for us. Again, pen and paper handy, get it ready, because here comes Margo. It's good to be here and speaking about something that I absolutely love, and it's it's podcasting. So I'd like to share my screen real quick. Before we do, can I tell everybody a quick story? There, it was about two years ago, had an opportunity to go to a senior center and uh, speak with it was about 30, 40 seniors there. And I'm going to talk about podcasting and tell them about the stories, tell them a few stories. Some of the people I interviewed and, you know, everybody's just ready to go. They're in their seats and everybody's ready to go. And there's this one person, you know, and I'm getting, I have my I have posters and everything. One person, she raised her hand. She said, Miss Margo, Miss Margo. I said, Miss Barbara, what's up? She said, what is a podcast? And i fell out laughing. And it wasn't that I was laughing at her, but I promised myself I'm never going to just take it for granted that people know what a podcast is. So today I'm going to talk about the audio podcast. I'm old school. I believe that audio podcast is a podcast. That's just me. (laughs) So it's when we're sitting in front of our laptop or whatever, our desktop, and we're speaking into our mic, and then it's being recorded. It's going through some that's recording it. And this file is heavy. It is super big. We can't just use that raw material and say, okay, I went ahead and did a message and I'm going to go ahead and put it on my website. No. You know how long it would take for that information to upload? They will never listen to it. They will never get it. So when we upload it to what we call a host, then it processes it and we get the RSS, real simple syndication feed. And then that's how it distributes it because we told that information where to go. And that's how you're able to listen to an audio podcast. So I Miss Barbara, I had to go ahead and let everybody know what a, a audio podcast is. So let me share my screen And I came up with a backup because I thought, oh, boy, we got Deb, who's a master at this, having trouble. Oh, boy. So here we go. Let's go ahead and see, make sure I can go ahead and get started on the presentation here. Should come up. Okay. Creating your audio podcast. And I broke it down into podcasting, audio podcasts run up under theory, mechanics, and the technical part of it. So today we're going to cover a a little bit of all three of them, because I think I know for a fact that you have to have a, a podcast that is crafted to be sturdy enough to work on a network or just do be, it can hold its own wherever you want it to be. You want to build your podcast one time because your, your thought process is I'm going to turn this into a business or I'm going to anchor it to my business. But if it's not built correctly so that you can build out and build up on it, you've wasted your time. And that's how I learned how to build a podcast so that it, you build it one time and it will always grow with you. Can I tell you one other story? I learned how to podcast. My sister and I were seated seated around our uh, kitchen table. And she said, I'm going to Hollywood, California. I said, what are you going to do in Hollywood? She said, I'm going to go and learn terrestrial radio and I'm going to learn how to podcast. I said, girl, I saw the same. I saw the same ad. Let's go. Let's go. And if they're not talking about what we want to hear, we can get in the car and come on back. We don't have to give those people any money. We got over there and the rest is history. I fell headlong in love. Keep in mind, I'm in late in my late 50s when we're doing all this, but we're fearless. We didn't care, you know, hey. So my sister, after two months, she said, I'm not getting on that freeway. I'm not going up there every Saturday. You on your own. But I loved it. 
and I kept going. And as I had my corporate job, it was my hobby. So what I learned in Hollywood, I just kept on going with it. And I did some terrestrial radio and I went on and got with that big mothership live 365 and learned how to use what I learned. So this is what part of what I want to pass on to you. There is theory, mechanics and technology and creating your audio podcast, but there is definitely no reason to be fearful. So today we're going to take a quick look at who is Margot Levesque. We're going to talk about the mechanics of podcasting, beginning with your why. We have heard about your why so many times throughout this Leverage Conference, but we cannot sidestep it. How are you going to name your podcast? We don't want to forget about that. Purchasing your domain name, choose your podcast host. That's very personal. That's like writing a book. It's like uh, choosing a boyfriend. Technology of podcasting, how to purchase your microphone. So many of us, we run right in and we get that mic and we don't even know. We don't know anything, you know, but somebody told me to go ahead and get that. How to choose editing, show notes, all that software that goes into what you're doing, recording and uploading, and even to have the audacity to go deeper and become a podcast business. We'll take a look at that. So who is Margot Levette? Her business, her voice, her conversation with Margot Levette is my one of my podcasts, and it was born after I left my job of 26 years corporate job at FedEx. Oh, I thought I wasn't going to say that, but it was good to me. I, they, hey, they're the reason why I was able to build a home. I'll just put it on out there. But something really traumatic happened, and um, I quit. I quit after 26 years, took a year, year and a half off, and I even stopped podcasting. And uh, got myself back together. And everybody knows how that goes after you come out of something traumatic. But let me share this story with you. A friend of Deb Thorne and I, I was telling her about what happened. And I'm getting back in a podcast and didn't have a podcast or anything. Didn't have anything going. You know, I'm on a shoestring with all of this thinking I'm going to get back in the podcast. He didn't have anything put into place. But she says, finally, I know what you're doing. Finally, I know about a po- what a podcast is. Deb Thorne is going to Prince George's County and she's looking for speakers. You should call her and get involved with that. So, you know, everything in me, I said, uh, I want to do it, but I'm scared. I want to do it, but I'm scared. But I called her up and Deb was Deb. And I uh, went to Prince George's County and got a chance to speak at her ice cream social. And uh, while I was there, I met the person who would help me get my confidence back, help me build her business, her voice, her conversation with Margot Levette. And I shall never forget that time, that opportunity. I was built up in so many different ways. And the gentleman who helped me do all of this, he was podcasting and he was a gentleman who was an entrepreneur, never worked for anybody ever, never let him tell it. And I do believe he never did. So we built her business, her voice, her conversation. And I think I was 63 years old when I got serious about building out this podcast because I had I was coming from a music show. I was no longer music. I was no longer uh, that person. I was the person that had come out of corporate and I wanted people to understand how they can reinvent themselves. How can you reinvent to become a podcaster, an entrepreneur? Did I have all of the answers? No, but I knew people who did. And together we were going to have up under one umbrella, build a Mecca, for those who were coming behind me and needed that information. During that time, my mentor had me write a, uh, the book that I talked about yesterday came out as Amazon bestseller. And it's all about reinventing yourself. And I'm proud, I'm proud of that. Uh, the business, her business, her voice, her conversation went over to a network. And in 2018, when that network took over 1.2 million listeners, my show was number in the top five category on that network. So I, I've done a lot of work, put in a lot of work and time in it, and um, it's paying off. I, I absolutely have something to offer to, to people. So, okay, come on, change. Okay, now. Let's get to your why. This is so important. This is this is the, the mechanics. This is what make you know we're getting ready to build out here, but it all begins with you. Podcasting begins with your why. And you have to be honest. 
What's motivating you? Are you out to make a million dollars? I'm going to be the next Joel Rogan. He's over there. Everybody knows him. I'm going to make a whole bunch of money. If that's what's motivating you, then that's okay. Be honest about that. But some of us have a mission. We have a, a message. We have, we're on our second or third or fourth act. And we now know that we have our voices. There's no wrong reason why you want a podcast, but nail that thing down so that you can be clear, you can be concise, and all of that is going to be part of how you build out your podcast. Give yourself permission to build the podcast the way you want to, all right? No right, no wrong, what's motivating you? And then I always tell people, it's good to have a why, my why, but life has taught me you need a backup to the why, because sometimes that why gets run over, snowballed over, life just mows it over like, yeah, get out of here, you don't matter. So when I think my why is because I really want to help other men and women who want to make that quantum leap afraid of podcasting. I've been thinking about it. I want to help people be able to do that. And I want to be able to bring them before the men and the women who can situate them so that they can build out their business and do it with integrity and, and do it so that it's legacy that I really, really want to do that. But the backup to my why is the fact that I spent a whole bunch of money to get to this place. And do you think I'm going to let that whole bunch of money and time go by? No, heck no. That is the backup to my why. It ain't happening, partner. Mm -mm. So you always have your why and you always have the backup to your why, okay? Then you want to name your podcast. We're still up on the, under the mechanics of everything. What are you going to name your, your podcast? And think about your topic. You know, there are, I don't know how many people in the world, but there are people that are waiting to hear what you're preparing to give them. Okay, as long as you niche it down and you know what you want to talk about, if you're an expert or you know where the, you have the resources, Go on and do it, but name your podcast. Make sure it's sound for SEO. You want to make sure that you do that. I uh, had someone who came on to the show a couple of weeks ago, and she spelled black, B-L-A-C-Q-U-E. And I thought, I hope that people are going to be able to find you. It wasn't my podcast. You know, she was already podcasting and going on. And I thought I would not have chosen that spelling. So you do want to be careful about that because people are going to try to find your, your show, make it easy for them to find you. Okay. If you're looking for examples, Apple, oh my goodness, the new and noteworthy, no, noteworthy, go over there and check out some of the names of the podcast, check out their graphics also, because you're going to have to name your podcast, you're going to have to come up with your topic, and you definitely want to get those show graphics together, excuse me, the, that's first and foremost. So these are nece necessary mechanics for your show. It's a good thing to understand your why and the backup to your why. You want to be able to have the name of your podcast. Let it roll off your tongue. Let it be a part of you. And I always tell people, uh, don't run into that name because once you name your podcast, that should be the name of the podcast. Because you start uh, pitching this name and next week you're that name. You're just going to confuse people. And so the other, part, the other part of the mechanics is that you want to purchase your domain name. Get that dot com. OK, uh, if it says if you if it dot com is taken, I would think about another name. That's just me, because everybody thinks about her business, her voice, uh, um, her business, her voice dot com or whatever. You know, everybody goes with that dot com type of thing. You want to get your graphics together. And I have up here a tip is to use Canva. Oh, my goodness. Make Canva your friend because you can hire a graphic artist. But what happens when the money gets a little thin? What happens when every if you have a weekly show or a daily show, you're going to need some show art. Uh, so I think that it's good for you to start out with Canva being your friend, because I don't believe that a new podcaster should spend a bunch of money just trying to get off the ground. I don't, you're going to need that money on down the road. And then of course you want to, uh, connect yourself, become familiar with your podcast host, who's going to distribute that, uh, your show for you. You want to get comfortable with 
whoever, whatever you choose. So now let's get into the technology. Let me change my change my sheets here. The technology of podcasting. Now that you have all that other preliminary work, the mechanics, and that was just the tip of the iceberg. I, I want to think about the time here. Um, then think about your mics. And once again, be cost efficient. You want a good mic because it is the sound that is going to give your audience the experience, okay? If it's scratchy, if it sounds high pitch, if it's off balance, if it's just crappy sounding, you got the wrong mic. Do get a good mic and find somebody who's going to uh, give you some, some ideas. Now, yesterday we saw, who was the woman in Spain? Um, I can't think of her name, but she was in a coffee shop. So there are some mics that are not going to work well in a coffee shop at all. So, you know, consider where you're going to, perf- where you're going to have your studio, where you're going to record and, and find a mic. All right. Software. How are you going to record that software? You're going to use Audacity? Or are you going to use uh, Zoom? Are you going to use Squadcast? There's so many different things that you can use and, and give you good quality. Editing, you always want to be able to edit your, your episodes because it's going to balance it out. It's going to even it out. It's going to make you sound good. Even if you don't have the best mic, editing is going to make it sound even no highs no lows no whisperings and you're wondering what the heck did they say what happened in you <laughs> you know you got to fumble it's you the it, editing gives you the best possible listening experience so you always want to choose editing software ala two um, uh, there's, there's just so many of them. I wouldn't even want to go into it. You find one that you're comfortable with. And sometimes there's a learning curve, but it's well worth it. Show notes, people listen to podcasts, but sometimes you can't listen and you want to read. So you want to make sure that you are offering your audience show notes. That's very, very important. And then uh, there's you show notes are coming by way of transcription or, um, artificial intelligence. There's there's um, there's stuff out there for software out there. Artificial intelligence. You seed it, you feed it, and it starts populating your show notes. It's it's fascinating stuff. I I love it. And it's available. Now, how are you going to upload, record, and upload your episodes? You got that recording from your your choice of recording software, but now uploading your episodes, once again, from the previous slide, you want to make sure that you're going with with something like Buzzsprout. You want to go with a show host. That is, that's what they do. They give you a web, they give you a website so that you can embed it on your website so that every time a new show comes out, it goes right over to your website. You don't have to worry about it. Every time you upload that, that uh, your episode, it automatically goes out to Apple or Spotify or wherever you told it to go. You want to make sure that you chose a a host that you can work with, a host that has good customer service, a host that is not going to get tired of you asking them 50 billion questions because you're paying for that service. All right. So you look at how often you are going to record. How long are your episodes going to be? Are you going to have a co-host? You look at all of that when you're choosing your your, um, show host. And then I always tell people, have your trailer. Just do a two or three minute tops trailer. What is your podcast all about? Now, maybe you do what I I didn't do that at the beginning. I was ready, set, go. I just want to get on out there. You know, it's never too late to get a trailer out. And sometimes I think it's better for you to wait because you have a better understanding and a feeling. You know, someone was speaking about following your gut, your, your episodes, your show gets into your gut. It gets into the marrow of your bones. It becomes a part of you. It is your passion play. It gets into your dreams. It it gets into your everyday conversation. And when you are able to connect with your audience and you feel that show like that, I say, that's when you do your trailer. 
that's where it's it's always going to be evergreen. Your podcast is evergreen. It's not like radio where you do a spot and it's it's gone. Once you do a podcast and you upload it to the show host, it's there. 10,000 years from now, if the internet is still rolling, they're still going to be able to find you. That is the beauty of it. So that's why you want to do the preliminary work and build your podcast out the, to be strong, to be an example of you. My strategist told me, you're, you are the epitome of your listener. You know, So you build it around your listener. And you build it around yourself. And there's this wonderful dance that comes together once you really have hit that sweet spot of your, of your podcast. It's quite an amazing and magical place to do, thing to do, to build out. So today you learned how to create your podcast. And that's it in a nutshell. A lot of work goes into creating a podcast, but you learn and you, you build it out. And like I tell you, the first time you do it right the first time and you can always build out. Now, if you build as a hobbyist, then you can always turn that podcast into a business. You can, you can do a podcast business by way of becoming a, a production company. So many people are becoming product, going into production where they do it for for you. Everything, all you have to do is speak into the mic, send that on over to the comp production company, and they do everything, the intro, the outro, the show notes, everything. There's no reason, why, if you build your podcast correctly, there's no reason why you can't do that. Use that podcast as media, because it's how can, how podcasting can increase your business. You use it as media, okay? Let it speak for you. People want to see you hear you. And as you come and uh, weekly or daily, they get to know you. They understand your language. They understand how you make a guest feel comfortable so that they can come and they can just be at home with you. People pick up on that. They pick up on your energy. They pick up on whether or not you really like to do this thing of podcasting. Where is it? Oh, ho hum. I just got to do this because they're waiting on me. Oh, they said consistency is everything. I say that now is the time for women to find their voice. And I don't care if you want to talk about braiding hair or if you want to talk about how the leaves dance on the tree outside your home. If that's what you want to talk about, find time, space, and audience, and you put that out there. Because when your podcast is built correctly, you're going to start out with that. But then you're going to grow into it's, it's you're in reinvention and you're going to grow into another show or you're going to grow into live stream or you're going to grow into another subject. It, it starts out one way, but when you've built correctly and you're touching people, you always grow out. And grow up. That's just how it goes. So you, you do your pad, podcast and you can add it in addition to your business. I say use it as a means of communication for staff, clients, and your vendors. There's, there's um, I think it's Podbean that will let you do that. So that's only in-house information that you're able to uh, record and they have access to. The technology is definitely there for whatever you want to do. And use podcasting as media. Oh, my God marketing to marketing tool, advertising. You need that digital footprint. They need to be able to find you in print. They need to be able to find you uh, in digital and no matter what you're doing, because that is going to increase your visibility and your expertise. So maybe you found out I'm really excited about this thing of podcasting. I, I tell you, I, I love it. I want every woman here to start a podcast. I really do. Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. But when you involve me, I, and I learn. Today, you learned how to create your podcast, the theory, the mechanics, the technology. Now, 
immerse yourself in the industry, confidently move forward and give yourself permission, ask questions, go as deeply as you can, ask me questions, ask Sister, Sister C questions, ask anybody that you trust who has been in podcasting for a while, Evo Turner, T Evo Tara. Oh my goodness, he was, he was podcasting back in 2004. Check folks out and go deep, okay? And I have a free gift for you. I don't know if I'm supposed to give that out now. I can leave a link, but I did a free video. I did a video for you because it's the, just three things I want you to think about when you're in this reinvention process as a podcaster. It's not a tutorial on how to podcast, but just three things that came to mind that, uh, man, I, did, I didn't think about that when I was trying to get into this podcasting thing, all right? So let me stop sharing my screen. I went through kind of fast, but um, I don't know. There's a lot of information. I didn't want to uh, blow anybody out of their chairs, you know, but it's now is a good time to podcast. They talk about the blue ocean. They talk about the red ocean. Don't let anybody snowball, snowball you. It's a blue ocean. Okay. There's plenty of room excuse me, plenty of room for you to get your podcast together. And the listeners will come. It's long tail work. Yeah, but they will come. And if as you position yourself, you will find opportunities to monetize. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. That was awesome.